This is the future. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Warframe video. So we are just a few days away from New Year's Eve and I wanna make a, a top tier list video in Warframe beginning with the best helmet or subsume abilities that you should try into your Warframes. Take note that this video might be subjective so feel free to share your thoughts about your favorite helmet or subsume builds in the comment section below. In addition, if you find something wrong or I have missed something, feel free to call me out in the comment below. Lastly, the helmet and subsume abilities you see here are not in chronological order but rest assured sure that all that I've included here are the most useful ones in my opinion, and I have tested them all in real missions. Okay, I think that you know all about what you'll be seeing in this video, so now let's proceed to the first helmet named Pull. This is Mag's first ability that you can subsume to any of your favorite Warframes. Now most of you would think that this ability is just for instant crowd control and grouping, but there's an insane melee synergy right now for Mag's Pull that makes any melee broken. In case you don't know, Ground Finisher was buffed during Daggett's update. Ground Finishers now ignore the armor value of enemies, which means it now deals true damage just like finisher damage in the game. In addition, it activates melee finisher arcanes such as arcane trickery and every hit will be treated a chance to proc the arcane that turns you invisible. This is insane since pull can group multiple targets at once and they are susceptible to ground finishers. When you perform a ground finisher, it will have increased damage if you also have finisher buffs and the arcane trickery will have a high chance of activating every time. Basically, finisher setup that has arcane trickery right now are still alive and relevant because of pull as it makes it easy to activate the invisibility of our arcane trickery, and it also allows you to kill multiple targets at once. Next, we have the Petrify ability. Subsume this to Nidus and equip its Orgaze Augment, and you will make the Infested Warframe a good farming Warframe, even better than Necros when survivability is involved in long endurance farming run. The only downside though is that Orgaze requires 400% power strength to get the 100% loot drop chance, but this is quite easy right now with Molt Augmented plus all the power strength mods in the game. The best part is Nidus also has Virulence which he can spam to gain energy, and in the process you can also spam Petrify to turn enemies into stone and make them drop additional loot when they shattered. Although Petrify is a very exclusive helmet build, I really want to include it in this video since it's not only fun to use with Nidus, but it makes the Warframe useful when it comes to farming resources. Moving on, let's talk about damage buffing abilities, namely Roar, Sada's Whisper, and Eclipse. These are the best abilities when it comes to increasing your damage, but they have specific uses. Eclipse is great when it comes to idle on hunting since you have the full benefit of the weapon damage buff while standing in bright areas even if it's nighttime in the plains. It's also great in Contagion Arcane setup since the damage boost can go millions. However, Roar beats Eclipse when it comes to increasing the damage of not just weapon but also Warframe abilities. Roar is also great when it comes to damage over time setup such as gas and slash bleed combos. While Zada's Whisper proves to be a dream for those adept at crafting builds, this ability provides an additional source of damage for your weapons enabling them to apply void stats. Status. This, in turn, generates a magnetic field surrounding the target, significantly enhancing the aim assist for your weapons. As this ability is considered an additional damage instance, it can be combined with on-hit modifications, leverage double dipping damage through faction bane effects, and amplify the effects of status chance modifications such as condition overload. If you're prepared to tailor your build around it, Zada's Whisper emerges as a formidable force against all factions, particularly proving effective against sentience. Not to mention that it gets super busted when paired with galvanized status mods, perfect with Mesa and Titania, and it also solves the problem of Excalibur's Exalted Blade, allowing you to kill faster while using the iconic weapon of the poster boy of Warframe. Also, I would like to talk about how good Golden Instinct is especially when you have to find new stuff like Void Plumes and new content. With this ability you can summon a Void Spark for a couple seconds which seeks out the location of nearby Syndicate medallions, yacht and Treasures, Rare Storage Containers, Void Plumes, Zerium Accolades, and Unscanned Korea, Cephalon fragments, frame fighter fragments, and some accord fragments within 200 meters. When there's no rare loot in the area, it will show you a message that the area is barren. I usually use this ability when finding Vokas and other containers in the whispers in the walls in day one. It's a great tool to use, especially if you still don't know the appearance of what you are looking for in the tile set. Now let's talk about Thero Strike, Shuriken, and Pillage as defense stripping abilities. Ash seeking Shuriken is probably the weakest as it only strips armor, but it's still useful for 
for some guys in the Warframe community who love running disruption missions in green ear tile set. They used Ash with Seeking Shuriken to strip all armor of the demolished unit before they load up their gun dish and overload setup. But in terms of Helminth builds, Ash Shuriken get outclassed by Tharos Strike and Pillage. Styan X Tharos Strike can strip all armor and shield of enemies in one cast, and it only requires 200% power strength to fully strip all the shield and armor of an enemy. Not to mention that it's fast casting and it got a slight advantage over Pillage when it comes to frequency of use. However, Pillage is just god tier when it comes to Helminth builds, as not only does it strip defenses, but it solves the survivability problems of most squishy Warframes with its feature to obtain shield per enemies hit by the ability. The only problem though is that it requires 400% power strength to fully strip the armor and shield of an enemy. However, it's not necessary though as it's better that you don't fully strip the defenses in one go, so you can also take advantage of the shield gain from Pillage. And mind you, shield right now has 50% damage reduction and the mechanic wherein you can abuse the shield gating and vulnerability if you have something like Pillage to restore your shield fast. Whenever you have trouble surviving and killing enemies, then Pillage is one of the best Helminth abilities to go to. Aside from Pillage, Sevagoth's Gloom is widely used by players when it comes to survivability. The ability has an insane 95% slow and can let you life steal while the ability is active. The slow is great when it comes to crowd control and it pairs well with my Necros. I use Gloom in my Necros when it comes to farming as sometimes I don't want to babysit my shadows just to get the damage reduction from a shield of shadows. Now, there are other builds such as low range Mesa and Chroma that I enjoy Gloom. The lifesteal is god sent for these Warframes as they have high damage reduction which makes them super tanky and perfect for Gloom setup. So, how about Harrow's Condemn ability? Well, it's a great tool for getting a shield also, but it doesn't have the defense strip like Pillage. In most cases, you use this ability in another Warframe if you have no problem with the damage of a Warframe or your she already has something like the meta slash or ability to strip defenses. The advantage of having Condemn is that you can easily do headshot and Steel Path Acolytes can be stunned by the ability. Aside from that, Pillage is the perfect combo for defense and defense stripping. There are also abilities in the Helmet system that are great Eximus counters. The first one is Breach Surge and the other one is Mesa's Shooting Gallery with the Muzzle Flash Augment. Breach Surge is insane since one cast of the ability can blind even Eximus units and once you deal huge damage to a target affected by Breach Surge, it will send out a spark that seeks nearby enemies to do insane damage also. It's great in setup like Mag's Bubble, Oberon's Carpet, or anything that can deal insane damage over time or huge damage in an instant. Its crowd control is just a bonus feature, but it does make Seximus dumb and do nothing. The same goes with a Muzzle Flash setup, which is best used in team composition. Each time you met the kill requirement, enemies will get blinded, and this includes Eximus units. This is perfect with Limbo or any other Warframes that require extra help in defending objectives against high-level Eximus units. Banshee Silence was the greatest counter for Eximus units in the past, but it got nerfed to the ground. Right now, the only thing you can benefit from Silence is leveling your Warframes in the normal star chart Telesto and Saturn with a carpet bombing Kuva Brahma build. With high range and the Savage Silence augment in your Warframe, you can take advantage of the Stealth Affinity bonus while Silence is active, giving you tons of affinity and allowing you to max rank your Warframe within minutes. The same goes with Thermal Sunder, and this is another best way to max rank your Warframe by subsuming it into the first ability slot. Only this time, we will not go to Telesto Saturn but into the normal Sanctuary Onslaught. It may require you to mod your Warframe with high range plus Archon Vitality, coupled with a bit of power strength to nuke enemies with Thermal Sunder. Also in the past, Helminth Thermal Sunder is busted with Garuda as there are instances that the damage becomes bonkers and extremely nasty that it can nuke level cap enemies with over millions of damage. However, Helminth Thermal Sunder now has a cap in damage and got nerfed to the ground. It's still great in clearing and speed running missions, but not great for high level missions. Both Thermal Sunder and Silence are great subsumable abilities for leveling, but the only problem though is that you would spend resources every time you want to level up your Warframe. If you don't want to do that, then your best way to level up right now is doing public queues in Hydrant, Elite Sanctuary Onslaught, or the Steel Pass Survival Mission in Alara Jupiter. Also, I would like to talk about Wrathful Advance, which is the best Helminth ability for red crit melee builds. If you have a melee weapon with 0% critical chance, then you can make it crit or even do red crit numbers with the Wrathful Advance Helminth setup. Just be mindful though that red crit builds with Helminth requires 300% or more power strength to get those juicy red crit numbers. One of the best setup I have is the red crit Wrathful Advance Chroma, which is insane when paired with Glaive Prime or even with Exodia Contagion. Next, we have Perspicacity. So, the description of this Helminth ability speaks for itself and this is mostly used in spy missions while playing a Warframe such as Ivora. Perspicacity lasts indefinitely until the player initiates a hack from consoles and other interactive objects. The best part is, works during nightmare mode missions, sorties, and archon hunts, which makes it your easy ticket to completing any
any spy mission in Warframe without failing. Then we have Lycast Hunt. I have so much fun with this ability when Varuna first came out. Don't get me wrong, Varuna is a great Warframe and I did not subsume the wolf because she is trash. What made me do it is because her Lycast Hunt ability fixes the energy problem of a whip clock aura. This is by far the best alternative to a dispensary Korra since every time you hit enemies with her whip claw, they have a chance to drop health orbs which then get converted to energy by equilibrium. And the best part is equilibrium right now can pick up health orbs even if you are full health so every kill will give you overflowing energy with Korra. In addition, this doesn't just work well with Korra's whip claw but also with good condition overload melee setup. You can make the duration of the ability endless every time you kill enemies with multiple status making it a great synergy with no downtime. Protea's dispensary is also a good choice for solving your energy problem when you pair it with equilibrium and this is commonly used in railjack missions. I know that Lavos is a great pilot when it comes to railjack mission, but I prefer to have dispensary or any energy regeneration, especially to those missions that has extra steps such as exterminate or survival. Lavos is a good warframe, but it would be better if you have a dispensary mesa who can obliterate exterminate missions in seconds. Both dispensary and Lycaf's hunt are great when it comes to solving your energy problem, but after whispers in the walls, they might become obsolete since there's one subsume ability to rule them all, and I am saving it for last in this video. Also, I just want to talk about the best grouping ability in the helmet system, which is Korra's Ensnare. This ability is wide and can group targets effectively compared to Larva. However, Zephyr's Air Burst is also a great option. I just like Ensnare better since it can also affect Steel Path Acolyte units. And lastly, let's talk about the best subsumable ability in the game called Nourish. This is Grendel's subsumable ability, and after Whispers in the Walls, Nourish has become more potent and universal for all Warframes. There's a mod called Energy Nexus that works well with Nourish, and when you activate it, you gain rapid energy regeneration with the mod. Now, pair this with the Xenurix Wellspring, and you will have an overflowing energy that you don't need any Lycath's Hunt or Dispensary setup in your build. The best part is, and most players forget, is that Nourish will add Viral procs to your weapons also, and even to those Exalted weapons. We all know how overpowered Viral is right now, and having something that gives you guaranteed Viral with energy regeneration is always the perfect buff for Warframe. So that's all about it. I made the description for each Helminth ability's brief but concise. If you want to check some of the Helminth builds in action, then feel free to take a look at the playlist which I have included in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again in my next video. Squad Leader signing off. This is the future.